How does scoliosis affect a person's life? Scoliosis causes an unnatural spinal curvature to occur and develop. Now the spinal curve bends to the side and it also rotates, making scoliosis a true three-dimensional condition. The rotation is into the concavity of the curvature and it typically happens in a, in a different area of the spine, meaning it can happen in the lumbar spine, the thoracic spine, or the cervical spine. And in some cases, it can encompass more than one curve, so you can have curves in multiple areas of the spine. And normally when we look at scoliosis, it introduces a lot of uneven forces to the spine, the surrounding muscles, the nerves, the tissues, and it can have effects that can affect more than just the spine itself. As a progressive condition, we know scoliosis has its very nature is to worsen over time. And we know scoliosis can range from mild curvatures to moderate to severe, even to very severe. And therefore we know it's in its progressive nature to worsen, meaning that every severe scoliosis was once mild. Curves don't start severe, they develop to severe. So we always don't know what triggers a scoliosis initially to develop, because the majority of cases of scoliosis are idiopathic in nature. But we do know growth is the number one risk for rapid progression in children. And the effects of scoliosis are likely to get worse that when child or children go through growth spurts, and this is typically during puberty. The most common symptom associated in scoliosis is what they see. Scoliosis thankfully doesn't really affect much of what they can perform. Most patients with significant scoliosis cases can still function, they can still play sports, they don't normally don't have pain or discomfort. They normally, only thing it is is what they see. It's this uneven forces that are distributed throughout the body and they can see uneven shoulders, they can see uneven hips, are typically the earliest sign. They can see the development of a rib cage arch or rib differences within the body. They can see the arms and legs appear to hang at different lengths from the body. And the, these are the most common effects or only visual. Some additional effects may be changes to like balance or proprioception and coordination and gait, but for most kids, it's what they see. It's what they can see in the mirror, and it's what you can see in their body. It's the biggest effect. And unfortunately, as these curves become more severe, it starts to affect their appearance, and this can have effect in the way they, they perceive themselves, their self-image, and their confidence. Because most children just really want to blend in with their peers, and they don't want to look different. They don't want to walk different. So therefore, for most children, they're not really affected functionally in the majority of cases. Now, the argument is where do curves become big enough where they start affecting other things? Like at 60 or 70 or 80 or 90 degrees, can they start to affect organ function or they can start to affect cardiovascular or lung function, like pulmonary function. And the truth is we don't know when that will occur for anybody. It is unique to that person. So somebody with a 40 degree curvature may have some development, pulmonary restrictions, and some other patients at the exact same age or exact same size of curvature may have no effect pulmonary wise. So it's unique to the person. So the only way to know if there's any type of other effect than what you're seeing is to have those systems tested. Now, unfortunately, in adult patients that we normally see these postural changes like we tend to see in adolescents, but they tend to be a lot more leaning in nature, a lot more shifting from one side, even kind of bending forward. But the biggest effect that adults have as a result of scoliosis is typically pain, and pain tends to affect their quality of life. And normally it could start off as dull and achy pain as a young adult, but as they get older, the scoliosis becomes more and more comp compressive, and the, and as gravity over time takes, pr takes precedence over their life, this compression can start affecting more surrounding tissues and nerve, and it can start to affect the areas of the nerves that are affected by the scoliosis, meaning if they have a lumbar curve, it can affect more of the lumbar nerves, thoracic curve can affect more of the thoracic spine and therefore pain is the main reason why adults come to seek treatment for a diagnosis of scoliosis because they feel that their curve is worsening. In many cases, when they go seek treatment for, from physicians or from doctors, more often than not, they're just given medications or injections to treat the symptoms associated with the scoliosis, but the curve is, let, is left to progress. Now, the good news in adult patients, curves don't progress rapidly. They progress very slowly. Unlike adolescents, when they grow, they can progress very quickly. Rapid progression in an in a adolescent can be 
you know, some curves can progress 20 degrees in six to eight weeks if they're going through rapid growth and development. I've seen curves progress 60 degrees in six months during rapid growth. In adult cases, it's very different. It's normally based upon the size of curve. So if a curve is about 50 degrees in the adult form, they say about a half a degree to one degree a year from somewhere between 20 years of age to about 50. Somewhere around 50 where their pain starts to increase and worsen, the curve starts to increase the rate and whatever it's doing, it will start doubling. So if it's doing half a degree, you'll start doing one. If it's doing one, you'll start doing two. And then from that moment on, almost every five to 10 years, it will double the rate to start becoming faster or more rapid in later stage life. Now, we know scoliosis treatment can also have an effect on patients' lives. Not only can scoliosis have an effect, but the treating the scoliosis can have an effect. And when we look at treating scoliosis, we know there's two specific ways of treating it. One is surgically treating scoliosis and non-surgically treating scoliosis. Now, spinal fusion surgery is a surgery that they use with rods and screws to try to fuse the spine where the curvature is. And if you have two curvatures, it's gonna fuse both areas. And this is an invasive procedure that can cost the spine a tremendous amount of function, meaning they're immobilizing the spine, they're screwing together with rods and screws, they're trying to straighten the spine but they're doing it by sacrificing function and, and strength. And now the spine is more vulnerable to injury. This can have a drastic effect on the quality of patient's life because now they're dealing with the effects of the spinal fusion itself. And potentially the effects of this fusion could be greater than the effects of the scoliosis. And this is a big argument that nobody really can answer because nobody really knows the long-term effects of spinal fusion over 20, 30, 40 years. So that's a big component that people have to consider if they're considering spinal fusion as part of their treatment option and how it's gonna affect them relative to their scoliosis. Non-surgical scoliosis treatment is safer in terms of having a negative invasive impact on their lives and not dealing with you know, you know, spinal fusion and surgery, but it also has an effect because most patients have to undergo some type of treatment, meaning they have to go through some type of discipline to try to do exercise and therapy and rehabilitation to help strengthen the spine to help try to reduce it, some patients may even have to wear a brace for a period of time and have to deal with the effects of wearing a brace. But these tend to be much safer and much more functionally based, meaning during treatment and after treatment, the spine will function better, not function less. And that's the main concern when we look at scoliosis fusion is that you're sacrificing function for alignment with more conservative treatments, you're preserving function and also improving alignment. So therefore, even though we know scoliosis isn't curable, scoliosis can have an effect on your life, but the, sometimes the treatment can have a greater effect on your life. So choosing your right treatment option is by far the most important decision because unfortunately curves are progressive. Scoliosis doesn't have to define your life. It doesn't really have to control your life. There's a lot of professional athletes, Olympians, celebrities who have scoliosis and they function at very high levels and compete at very, very high levels of, of sports with a very significant or severe scoliosis. Scoliosis treatment is about managing the curvature ongoing throughout your life, improving your quality of life, and making sure that scoliosis and your spine is as functional as possible so you can not be limited by the effects of the curvature or your treatment. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.